Now we're going to look at a slightly complicated example for free body diagrams. And in this question, we are given a beam that is pinned, but that pin connection is welded. So it actually behaves like a cantilever or fixed boundary condition. And on this beam, um, which has a mass of 200 kilograms and center of gravity position is shown here, there is also a man with a mass of 80 kilograms standing on the beam and uh, he is pulling on this rope here with a force of 300 newtons and that rope wraps around a pulley, attaches itself to the beam again and that pulley itself is attached to the ground. And we are asked to calculate the force and the moment that it will occur at the welded pin in order for this system to be in static equilibrium. So we're going to analyze this system by uh, first making a free body diagram. So we'll make a free body diagram. We will cut the beam here, from free it from this support, and we'll have to put the reactions of the welded pin there. And we're going to cut here through the rope here at the bottom. Okay, I've written down here the givens from the problem description. So the mass of the beam is 200 kilograms. The mass of the man is 80 kilograms. The force the man is pulling on the rope is 300 newtons and gravity is 9.81 meters per second squared. So now we're going to start by drawing our free body diagram. And we have to first establish a coordinate system. Then we will draw our body. So we cut the beam at point A where the pin was, and at the bottom of the pulley, and the man is still on the beam. Uh, now we have to consider the loads acting on this system. We have the mass times gravity of the beam itself. We have the mass of the man times gravity itself. Then we have a force in this rope of the pulley, and because it's a rope, it has to be a tensile force. And we have at our pin connection at A, it is fixed in translation in the X and Y, so we will have a reaction AX and AY. And it also, because it's welded, the pin can't rotate, so we will get a moment at point A in the Z direction. Now if we look at this, we have AX, AY, MAZ, and F as unknowns, because the tension and he's pulling on the rope with 300 newtons, F is not 300 newtons. Um, so we have four unknowns, but only three equations. So what can we do to, um, to bring down the number of unknowns? Well, if you know how pulleys work, you can actually already do the relation, but let's um, look at cutting away the pulley, separating it, and coming up with two free body diagrams where we have tension in this rope. So we know that tension is 300 newtons, and the tension will remain constant as it goes around the pulley because it's frictionless. Now you can prove this to yourself if you take some of the moments for this free body diagram around this point, we get this tension times the moment arm, which is the radius, so tension times radius creates a clockwise, and then this tension times the radius creates a counterclockwise, and so that sums to zero. So T has to be equal to T in a frictionless pulley. Okay, so now if we reanalyze this system, we see that we now only have three unknowns, AX, AY, and our moment AZ. Okay. Um, the masses are known and the tension is known as 300 newtons. So we can now solve. Now first I will look at some of the forces and we'll do some of the forces in the X direction and I'll use the right direction as my positive reference. And here we see that our only force in the X direction is the horizontal reaction force AX that is possible at the built-in condition. But because we have no other external forces in the horizontal direction, that is zero. If I now look at some of the forces in the y direction and take upwards as my positive reference, I have AY acting upwards, 
m1 times g acting downwards, so negative, m2 times g acting downwards, so negative, and then two t forces acting downwards. Now all of these are known, so I can rearrange and get ay is equal to m1 plus m2 times the acceleration due to gravity plus 2t. I can then sub in the values here, and I haven't written units here, but you can see I have everything in base units. So 200 kilograms, 80 kilograms, 9.81 meters per second squared. This will give me newtons, and 2 times 300 newtons. So the units are compatible. I can add those. And I'll get 3,346.8 newtons, or about 3.3 kilonewtons. Now if I do some of the moments, I'm going to pick point A as my reference point, and counterclockwise as my positive reference direction. Now because I pick point A, both AX and AY pass through A and do not contribute to the moment equilibrium. So my first moment will be MAZ, which is in the counterclockwise, thus positive in my equilibrium equation. If I go along the beam, the next force I encounter is M1 times G, and it will have a moment arm of 1200 millimeters, and it will cause a clockwise or negative moment. And you see here I've transformed the 1200 millimeters into meters to keep everything in base units. So that my mass times gravity times meters will give me um, Newton meters. Now if I continue to travel along the beam, I will hit the person and there is a mass 2 times gravity with a moment arm of 1.2 meters plus 0.6 meters, which will be clockwise, thus a negative moment. Then I have the same for T uh, and the same for the second T, which is at 1.2 plus 0.6 plus 0.3 meters. Now, of course, this is an equilibrium equation, so all of that has to sum to zero. So. I can rearrange this, all of these are negative, so the moment becomes the sum of all of these as positives. And here I've substituted in all the numbers, and again, I haven't written the units here, but I've ensured that everything is in base units, so my result will come out in Newton meters. So I'll get 4.937 times 10 to the 3 Newton meters, which is 4.9 kilonewton meters. Now, did we actually answer the question? If we look back here, we have components. So in a way, we've, we've answered it, but the question asked us for the reaction force and the reaction moment. So to be a little bit more um, complete in our answer, we should either draw point A and show the resultant force and the resultant moment with an indication of its directions, uh, or we can give it in vector formulation.